hi everyone welcome to today's tutorial so today we're looking at um, uh, vibrations and uh, uh, vibrations and waves and we have this question on the screen here if you have not uh, yet subscribed to the channel make sure that you do so by clicking on the button below there uh, on the subscription button below and then if you have any questions in mathematics in physics feel free to send them over and then I'll help you out all right so let's quickly begin to solve uh, these questions all right so the first question is the variation with extension x of the force f uh, for a spring a is shown there the point l on the graph is elastic is the elastic limit of the spring so the point l is the elastic limit of the spring and then the first question is there which is asking us to describe the meaning of the elastic uh, limit the meaning of elastic limit so the when you hear about elastic limit this is just a point beyond which the spring does not return to its original form or length when the load is removed so the elastic limit if you have let's say for instance you have a spring you have a spring uh it's uh like this you have a spring like that and then it has before you load this spring this is the distance it uh it, this is uh how this is its uh uh what's its length so if the length of the spring is l and then you discover that when you stretch this spring to any um to any length to any length let's say l1 to any length l1 it becomes something like this so l1 is from there to there it to when when you remove when you stretch this string and then you release it it goes back to this to its original form meaning it, it never reached uh, an elastic limit but when you stretch this spring you stretch it to a certain distance and then uh, I mean to a certain um, when you stretch this string to a certain length L and then after stretching this you release it and then when you release it instead of returning to its original length it maybe returns to somewhere it fails to return to its original length maybe it returns to somewhere like a, a, another new length L uh, which is not the original length because we know that springs the way they are made they are always supposed to return to their original length but because you had put a load that uh, had made the spring to go beyond its elastic limit it uh, fails to do us this it fails to return to that original length to its original length so that um, means that the the once the spring went beyond its elastic limit yeah so the elastic limit is just a point beyond which the spring does not um, return to its original length when the load is removed that's the elastic remi uh, limit sorry okay so um, the second one is uh, calculate the spring constant ka for a spring a so calculating the spring constant is also something that is very simple and straightforward so when you have been given if you don't if, if you do not have a curve or if you don't have any other data you can uh, calculate the spring constant by using the Hooke's law we know that Hooke's law is equal to Hooke's law is simply just equal to uh, negative k uh, s or sometimes they don't use s they, they use x they say negative k x this is the Hooke's law and then you just make k the subject to the formula there so you have negative f over so you have negative f over uh, x as the value of k but in this case since uh, we've been given uh, the data there which is on the table what you just need to do is uh, you first you just find the gradient of the line that you've been given there yeah so when you find the gradient of this uh, curve, rather this line that has been drawn on this graph, th that gradient is the one that is called the, uh, the the gradient is the one that is called the 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 the, 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 the spring constant. So 
we know to say m m which is the gradient is the one that we're going to call the spring constant and how are we going to find this gradient we know to say the value of k is found by f over um f over x so in this case we know to say f is in the y and then x is in the x uh, and then the displacement is in the x so to find k oh, by using the gradient formula we just say f1 minus f2 over uh, x1 minus x2 or if you want you can switch them you say k is equal to f2 minus f1 over x2 minus x1 you still get the same answer so when we go on this graph here you can check um we can get two points on the graph so the first point that we can get we can get any point on this graph any point on this graph so let us first let us get these points so we have um let's say for instance if i get this uh two if i move if i get this two i'll go there so if i get my x as two of course i'm supposed to multiply this by 10 to the power negative two so this would be 0 0.02 comma let me see the value of f so i'm going this side which is just uh one point uh six if you count the boxes this side this is just one point six and then we i can also get four so if i get four another point there so this would be 0 0.04 comma and then this uh when i draw straight like that this is just equal to 3.2 so 3.2 there so now we place these uh values in the formula for gradient so gradient is simply just equal to the spring constant which is equal to um, so we say 3.2 minus uh, 1.6 we say this minus that over this minus that so down there we're going to have 0 0.04 minus 0 0.02 so the, uh, the 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 spring constant will now uh, going uh, is therefore going to give us uh, of course on top there we have newtons and then down there we have meters so this is just going to give us when you use your calculator you get 80 newtons per meter so this is how you find the spring constant uh, using the graph so apart from that we've also been asked to calculate the work done in extending the spring with a force uh, 6.4 newtons so this one is also straightforward you just go where there's 6.4 which is somewhere there then you go up there uh, then you get the point so you get this value there and then you divide them to get uh, uh, the work done because we know that the work done is simply just um, uh, the, the work done is simply just uh, uh, rather the work done is simply just equal to the area under the curve so let me just erase everything so when we draw a line here at 6 oh 6.4 not really 6 6.4 when you draw at 6.4 there so the area under this uh, curve here is the one that we get as the work done so the work uh, done will simply just be equal to area so when you look at this shape this is a triangle so we use half and it's a right hang angle triangle so we use half base times height so work done is simply just going to be equal to half then the base there is simply just uh, 6.4 6.4 and then the height is the one that you get now from this point you draw a straight line you get this value there so when you get that value or, oh sorry i've switched them okay whether i switch them or not simply just the same so what i've gotten is the height then the base is simply just um oh sorry this is this is okay i thought i got the height okay so the base is simply just 6.4 and then the height is 0 0.08 yeah so this is just going to be 
sorry that was an error so i said um work done is simply just the area under the curve so work done is simply just equal to half base times height which is just the area under the curve so what we've been given here is the force i thought we were given the displacement the, the distance so we've been given the force which is 6.4 so we get 6.4 from this uh from this side and then we go like that then from there we go down so you can see we have 0 0.08 uh, there so this is when we get the area under this uh, line that is the work done so work done will simply just be equal to half the base we get 0 0.08 0 0.08 I'm multiplying this 8 times 10 to the power negative 2 then we are uh, and then this base times the height is simply just um, the distance from there to that point which we've been given to be 6.4 so when you do your mathematics there you discover that you find the answer as um, 0 0.256 joules so 0 0.256 joules so this was the work done uh, on extending in, in extending the spring with uh, this force so this is how you deal with uh, graphs all right so let's move on to the part b of this question so part b is um is uh, a second spring b of spring constant two times k a meaning the previous k that we had which was just 80 so K A was simply just 80 newtons per meter, and then they are saying uh, the second spring B. Ha so we are going to call it spring constant K B, which is which will just be two times K A, which is one sixty newtons per meter. Now joins to spring A, as shown in the figure. A force of of 6.4 newton extends the combination of the springs, uh, for the com extends the combination of the springs for the combination of extends the combination of the springs. In short, calculate the total extension. So, how do you find the total extension? So, you first have to find. Um, so, the total extension. You first have to find. Uh, the, the the extension or the displacement that to the, the displacement that you are going to have using uh, the values that you've uh, been given so the displacement from the formula f is equal to uh, ks we make s the subject this will just be f over k which is just going to be f that has been given is 64 and then our k is simply just um, so our k is simply just 80 so we first have to find the extension using this simple formula there. So when you do your calculations there, 64 divided by 80, you get 0. Point, um, so 64 divided by, oh sorry, this is 6.4. The question is saying 6.4, not 64. So 6.4 divided by 80, this will give you 0. 0.08 as the extension in meters. And then... You also have to find another extension S uh, when the extension, this was the extension before the second spring was uh, was put there. So we also have to find another extension after adding the spring. So after adding another spring, the extension becomes uh, the same formula F over uh, F over K. Okay? But in this case, we're going to use k, which is 160. So we're going to have f, which is uh, the same 6.4, then everything divided by 160 newtons, rather newtons and then newton per meter. So the value of s in this case becomes 0 0.04. So now to find the total extension, total extension, you simply just add the two extensions, which is 0 0.08 and uh, 0 0.04. So when you add the two extensions there, you get 0 0.12 meters. This is the total extension. So from there, we can now 
go on to the uh, next question which is finding the spring constant so we find the new spring constant now so we find the new spring constant which is uh, found by combining two uh, these two springs so how do you find the new spring constant we use the total extension so we are going to say um, k we know to say k is given by f over s so the value of f will still remain 6.4 and then we're going to have 6.4 there and then divide by the value of s we use 0 0.12 0 0.12 this one is newtons and then this one is meters so the new uh, k value simply just be equal to um, when you divide that you get 53.33 uh, newtons per meter so this is the new spring constant all right so we have solved the whole question let's uh, quickly move on to the next question uh, thank you very much for watching the tutorial see you in the next tutorial video that we're going to have my name is Hamted if you have any questions feel free to contact me on, on any of these lines don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Shalom, shalom.